And Professor Bloom has been researching a single layer OLED device and in recent months or years has shown really, really interesting results and some groundbreaking achievements. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Thank you, Paul, for agreeing to give this talk and you have the floor. Thank you very much, Ron. I hope everybody can hear me well. Thank you yeah. for the invitation. So indeed, I would like to uh, give an overview of our journey towards a single layer OLED. I just have to, why don't I go to the next slide? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so this story began basically in the 90s where um, people got very enthusiastic that you could make OLEDs from a liquid. And in this case, it were soluble uh, conjugated polymers. And of course, the first application that came in mind were inkjet printed displays, with the main benefit would be the, the low cost. And the statement that you could hear in the 90s a lot was, if we would be able to replace an IC factory with ultra high vacuum uh, by a print shop, that would really uh, be a, a breakthrough in display technology. Uh, however, the problem was uh, the efficiency. So on the top, you see the, the simple polymer LED, which has indeed two organic layers, a whole transport layer, P.PSS, and an emitting polymer. Uh, but the problem was that the efficiencies were very low. So uh, external quantum efficiencies were in the order of only a few percent. And in parallel to this were, of course, the, the small molecule OLEDs that had the advantage that you can stack many layers on top of each other without dissolving the other ones. And by um, over time, uh, these uh, OLEDs have become quite complex with many layers, but also reach very high efficiencies and uh, stabilities. Uh, typically, E2E is more in the range of 25 to 30%. Now, um, why was the efficiency of these early days polymer LEDs so low? And basically the efficiency, the external quantum efficiency consists of four factors. One is the electrical efficiency. And we spend a lot of time and effort to, to model all these processes and to find out uh, how where they come from. But um, what, you, what we found was that at higher light intensities, this electrical efficiency can be uh, about 75 or 80%. I will come back to that. Then, of course, in the early generation, we did not harvest triplets. So th that is only a singlet quantum yield of 25%. And then many of these materials had a PL quantum yield on the order of 50, 60%. And then uh, there was always a bit of guess how many photons would escape the device. So typically people take 20%. But if you look on these numbers, you indeed end up on numbers in the order of a few percent ECOE. Now, regarding the electrical efficiency, um, one of the main major issues of these uh, devices is that the transport is uh, not balanced. And here you see already a very old measurement on a PPV polymer, uh, where uh, in uh, green is the whole current. And this is a, uh, we'll come back later, this is a current voltage characteristic on a log log plot, where a quadratic dependence uh, means uh, a slope of two. And uh, what you see is that the electron current in purple is many orders of magnitude lower than the whole current and also has a very steep slope around of six. So it's the current goes with three to the power of six. And this is um, a fingerprint of, of trapping. And also because of this, people call them these polymers often P-type conductors because they um, conduct holes much better than electrons. So to summarize a story, yeah, um, the, the efficiency of these early days OLEDs were low because first there was no uh, triplet harvesting and second the, word, the, the electron current was low due to trapping and we found out that these traps basically have a triple negative effect so one is you get uh, non-radiative recombination of trapped electrons with free holes then it also turns out that when you create an exciton, an electron hole pair, that it can diffuse to such a defect and decompose there. And also what happens is when the electron transport is bad, most of the light will be generated close to the cathode, to the injecting electron, uh, electrode, and that is for bad for your outcoupling. And so to make a long story short, if we would take such an early day polymer LED and we would add triplet harvesting, we would probably reach something like 10%. But if we would get, could get rid of these defects and optimize, uh, get rid of all these negative effects, we would reach in the end 